Back in 2018, I ended up flying over to Greece for a week-long solo vacation. There were a few hotels I had my eye on while I was planning the trip, but then for the same price, I could get an entire apartment on Airbnb, and some of the stuff they had available for rent was absolutely amazing. For the price of an entire ensuite hotel room, I could get an apartment that looked something like a legitimate millionaire might choose to stay in during a visit to a French Riviera or something. Greece doesn't exactly have the strongest economy, so it kind of made sense that it would be going so cheap, but even so, compared to the other listings, there's no way to describe it other than suspiciously affordable. Like any other sane person would have done, I immediately went to check the reviews, and even with all the five-star reviews and glowing praise of the apartment's owner, I still thought the whole thing was just way too good to be true. But then again, there were only two windows where the place wasn't booked, so not only did that show that the other people were genuinely interested in the place, but it also meant that it was a case of poop or get off the pot, so to speak. I could book the place, check it out, then if it turned out to be some well-distinguished nightmare, I could just maybe just find myself a hotel chain with a simpler but more reliable kind of room and just use the place to rest my head after long days of exploring my ancestral home. The flight over to Greece was the first long flight I'd been on, and the whole process just completely exhausted me. It's weird that just sitting on a plane for almost 10 hours can do that to a person, but I guess it was mainly the stress that took it out of me. Worrying that I'd lost my passport or my e-ticket, constantly worrying that I'd left something crucial back in my apartment, all irrational first-time flyer stuff, I know, but after the relief of landing without a hitch and making it to the Airbnb okay, I felt like I could sleep for days. Even the elation of seeing the apartment didn't keep me up for long, and my god was I elated. It was everything I could have possibly hoped for. A magnificent mosaic of black and white tiles and wrought iron spiral staircases. Hell, they could have charged double the asking price and people still would have paid it to stay in a place like that. But then the question remained, why exactly were the owners charging such a low rate? I know, I know, it was a huge question, one that any right-minded person would have still been asking themselves, but I guess the place's beauty and my exhaustion made for this perfect cocktail to wipe my brain of thought and... I told myself that I could always properly survey the place the next morning after a good night's sleep. I remember waking up just before dawn to the sound of something scraping really close next to me. I mean, maybe scraping isn't the right word, but I ended up leaning over to the bedside table, switching on the light and seeing what was definitely a cockroach running for the darkness below the bed. I hate bugs, and cockroaches have to be the top of the list for me. And suddenly, I understood why the pricing of the Airbnb was so low. The entire building probably had an infestation that they just couldn't get rid of, and maybe they couldn't afford to have the place bug bomb, so they were hoping for a few quick bucks from Airbnb so they could afford it. That little theory of mine made much more sense when the owners refused me any kind of refund, giving me some bullcrap excuse of how Greece has lots of bugs in the summer, other guests didn't have a problem with it. They knew what they were doing, acting as if though a roach infestation is just like having a few houseflies, and trying to get a refund became a whole other story, just not nearly as scary as the one I have to tell here. So, if it wasn't already clear, there was no way in hell that I was about to spend another night in a place that had roaches so close to the bed, and luckily, I hadn't actually unpacked by that point, so I was able to just grab my stuff jump in the rental and drive down through town towards the harbor front where I knew that there were a bunch of hotels. Only as I'm driving, I can feel that there's something wrong with my left ear, kind of like it felt cold on the inside. I started thinking that maybe I had some kind of ear infection, that the exhaustion and the stress of flying had messed with my immune system. But then, I was driving, on my way to book a new hotel room and start some epic email battle to get a refund so it wasn't like I was in much of a position to do anything about it. But the thing was, it was still like 5 or 6 in the morning at that point, so it's not like any of the local clinics were open for me to get looked over. So, when the weird feeling in my ears started getting worse, 
I decided to pull over near the harbor front and stick a cotton swab in my ear to see if there was any blood or pus or whatever. And apologies to those who found that a little gross, but if you did, stop reading now, because things are about to get way, way worse. I pull over, fish around in my hand luggage for a little Tupperware box of bathroom-related stuff, pull out a cotton swab, then gently push one into my ear. But then when I did, I felt something actually move inside my ear. At the time, I couldn't tell if it was because I'd actually pushed a clump of earwax or something further up my ear canal. But then, when I pulled the cotton swab out again, I see these two real thin, dark brown things stuck to the tip. I remember looking at them and thinking, what the hell are those? Until suddenly, the thought hit me like an entire brick wall falling on me. I kind of wiggled my head again and felt that same weird movement in my left ear, and that's when I realized something that was like a worse nightmare come to life. There had been roaches near my bed when I woke up. Something was moving in my ear. The two little skinny things on the cotton swab were roach legs, and there was a freaking cockroach inside my ear canal. I was in complete denial for a minute or two, actually saying no, no, no out loud, trying to talk myself into being something else. But then, when I actually accepted what was happening, I started to hyperventilate. It took me a while to calm down, but when I did, the next move was to grab the pair of tweezers I had with me, carefully insert them into my ear, and try to get the roach out all on my own. I can barely even describe how horrifying it was, trying to work the tweezers in, touching the roach, then feeling it trying to scuttle further into my ear canal. It was like it was trying to burrow into my brain. I know that's not exactly how ears or brains work, and that they're not remotely connected in such a way, but in my groggy, terrified state, that's exactly what it felt like it was trying to do. The more I tried, the more it seemed to crawl away from the biting pincers of the tweezers, and I realized that if I was actually going to get this roach out of my ear, I'd have to drive to an actual hospital. That's how I ended up driving over to the Patras' University Hospital, and throughout the whole of that drive, I was acutely aware of the thing trying to burrow its way further into my ear canal. At this point, I feel like I should make it clear that while none of it was actually painful in any way, it was by far the worst kind of mental torture that I'd ever experienced in my whole life. Walking into the ER was the first piece of real luck I got, as because it was real early on a Monday morning, there was next to no one else waiting to be seen by the doctors. After some mother-daughter combo got themselves seen to, I was called up to the desk to tell them what the problem was. The first nurse I spoke to didn't speak English all that well, so I had to wait a few more minutes while she found someone that did. The next nurse spoke amazing English, but when I explained what the situation was, she had this look on her face that told me she just straight up didn't believe me. She asked me if I was in pain, and I said no, but that I felt like I was going to puke. She still seemed skeptical, but... Then she took me to see a doctor, who looked in my ear with an otoscope, and although I don't speak Greek, the muted reaction the doctor had told me that there was definitely a cockroach in my ear. Using the nurse as a translator, the doctor told me that the most important thing was for me to keep calm. As they put some wristband thing on me, I was told that getting the roach out would be relatively easy, and they could 100% get the thing out, but I had to try and keep calm. If I didn't keep calm, I wouldn't be able to keep still, and to get the roach out, they were going to need to use some pretty delicate instruments that might damage my ears if I didn't keep perfectly still. Hearing that was hardly relaxing, but the nurse advised me to control my breathing and focus on the fact that everything was going to be okay, and that actually really helped me regain my focus. After that, another nurse took my blood pressure, which turned out to be alarmingly high, but then I put all that down to the stress of the whole situation, and we all agreed that I didn't require any kind of medication for it. I had no idea exactly why they were doing all these tests on me, and I'm sure they had their reasons, but I was just desperate for them to get to the actual extraction already. Thankfully, that's the next thing they did, and the nurse explained all the stuff the doctor was saying, 
how they were going to use the stuff called lidocaine as a prep for getting the roach out. The lidocaine would act as a numbing agent, making it so the extraction didn't hurt while also killing the roach. The lidocaine did its job alright, but before it did, the roach went into overdrive trying to escape the fluid. And this is probably the worst it felt for me, and I'm so glad that it was over after that. But literally being able to feel the thing dying in my ear, like speeding up and speeding up and just suddenly slowing down as it died. I'm not sure there are even words in the English language to sum up how horrifying it all felt. After about two minutes of feeling the roach die, the doctor took these big curved tweezers then started removing the roach, but not in one go. He did it piece by piece. Once the whole thing was out of me, or at least as much as they could pull out, the nurse showed me what they'd removed on a napkin. I guess it would have been about an inch long when it was intact, which I know isn't all that big, but it was still a cockroach running around my ear canal, so I don't care how small it was. After that, my ear canal was given one final check over just to make sure that there was nothing left behind, Then they basically told me that I was free to go with a prescription for oral antibiotics and a type that I would need to put directly into my ear. My whole left ear basically felt numb for the next 24 hours, but then as the week went on, it didn't really feel any better. I guess it was just the aftermath of having my ear invaded by both a cockroach and a pair of surgical tweezers. But then the half-dead scratch session in my ear just didn't stop, so when I got back to Baltimore, I went over to my doctor to get checked up again. So, about a week after I got back from Greece, I went for my appointment and told her about the whole cockroach trauma. But just to be safe, she asked a physician's assistant to flush my ear in the hopes that removing any wax buildup would help my hearing and get rid of the pressure. Then, once my ear had been flushed, they each took a look inside. I can't even begin to explain how much my heart sank when I heard the physician assistant say she saw what she believed to be a spiky insect leg inside my ear canal. I felt sick. The whole ordeal wasn't even over, and all I wanted was for it to finally just be over. My doctor ended up flushing my ear again, and pulling out six more pieces of the roach that the Greek doctors hadn't even seen, and this is almost two whole weeks after the whole incident first took place. I guess what I'd been looking at wasn't the whole roach, and I just wanted it to be the whole roach out of pure wishful thinking. I just quietly cried while the whole thing was going on, and my doctor was amazing because she actually gave me a hug when the whole thing was done. She's been my family doctor for years, so we had quite a close relationship like that for those wondering why she was getting a little too personal. But she also comforted me because she told me that there might be more of the roach in my ear, and that she was going to make me an emergency ear, nose, and throat appointment for the next day. When the appointment was over, I went home and tried as best I could to relax before heading to the ENT clinic the next morning. When I got there, they sat me in this real comfortable examination chair, then the ear, nose, and throat doctor placed some sort of microscope next to my head. He didn't say much at all. The whole examination basically took place in silence, right up until he said the dreaded words of, there's something in there all right. The next thing I know, he's using what looked like a large pair of scissors with a blunt end to fish around my ear canal for the rest of the roach. That time, no kind of numbing agent was used, so it was actually painful sometimes, and because of the piece of equipment he was using, I could hear the pieces of roach crunching as he gripped them and pulled them out. Even when he finished and had flushed my ear out with water again, to the point that he was 99% sure that he had gotten everything out, I still didn't feel that much better. That surprised me because I figured that once it was all out, I'd actually start feeling free of the whole thing. But I didn't. Instead, I couldn't stop thinking about the fact that the remnants of that roach existed in my ear for like two weeks, meaning there was still a chance that I was going to develop a nasty ear infection. I've only ever really gotten over the whole thing over the past year or so, but even so... I'm deathly afraid of any crawling insect that might find its way into my ear, especially cockroaches. I'm not nearly as bad as I used to be, but it's definitely still a thing for me. And honestly, I don't expect to be completely over it anytime soon. 
If you really like my content and want to support me, please like this video and click the subscribe button. It helps me to grow my channel as essential in reaching a wider audience. Most of you watching my videos aren't subscribed to my channel, and that's why my animations can't reach their full potential. They aren't recommended to more people who would surely love my content as much as you do. You can always unsubscribe at any moment. Thank you in advance, and enjoy the rest of the video. Last year, I was invited to a wedding in Oregon. I wasn't from there, and I decided when I went there I could stay a few extra days and make it into a little vacation. I was interested in exploring the area nearby, and I was able to find a really good deal on an Airbnb only 15 minutes away from the wedding venue. The wedding was on Saturday, and I arrived at the Airbnb on Thursday afternoon. It was a smaller looking house in a nice little neighborhood, and I had the whole thing to myself. The first day, I went to a nearby city and met up with another friend I knew who was in town for the wedding as well. I returned to the house that night sort of late and tired from the long day. I got into bed, turned on the TV, and fell asleep within probably 15 minutes. I woke up the next morning without an alarm, which felt great, and I got up and made some coffee. When I was drinking it, I took a step out into the front yard because it looked like a really nice day outside. After I did, I was on the front step, and I noticed there seemed to be some sort of note taped to the front door. I picked it up and read it, not sure of what it could be. The note said, quote, I broke into your house last night. You should fix your locks. And then they had written a little winking face on it. I freaked out when I read this and immediately went back inside the house and started looking around. I was sure the front door had been locked because I remembered unlocking it to go outside just a few minutes ago. There was only one other entrance to the house, which was the back door. I ran over to it and checked, but that too seemed to be locked. I then started searching up and down the entire house. And like I said, it wasn't a very big house, so it didn't take me too long to look everywhere. After searching all the rooms, closets, and even cabinets, I didn't see anyone, or a trace of anyone either. I was creeped out, but after time, thought maybe it was some kind of prank by somebody who lived on the street, and knew that this house was rented by people a lot. There was no way to know for sure though. I've always been a really deep sleeper, plus the house didn't have a whole lot of furniture in it, so if somebody had been here, I probably wouldn't have known. I left the house shortly after that to go do more stuff in the nearby city, and also see some local parks. I took all my valuable stuff with me just in case, and I also contacted the Airbnb owner about the note I received. I was hoping they would reply to me before I got back home, reassuring me that the locks were fine and it was probably just a prank. After another long day of trying local restaurants, visiting local parks, and other cool buildings, I once again returned to the house that night. When I looked, the Airbnb owner never replied to me, and I was a little bit scared to go to bed. But I was tired and was able to convince myself it was probably just a joke, seeing as though everything in the house seemed fine, and just as it was when I left it. Wedding was the next day, so I once again watched some TV and then drifted off to sleep at about 11.30. The next morning, I woke up without an alarm again, but this time, I looked at the clock and saw that it was just after 6am. I didn't need to wake up until 9, and was about to turn over and go back to bed, but just started feeling a little bit paranoid. I decided to get up and walk around the house to make sure everything was okay. As I left the bedroom and walked down the hall, I immediately noticed that the back door of the house was wide open. When I saw this, I wanted to get out of there immediately. I knew the back door had been closed and locked before I had went to bed. I ran into the bedroom, packed up everything I had in probably less than five minutes, and went to leave the house. As I was about to walk out the front door, I started to hear the closet door in the living room begin to open. I never turned around to look, and instead, sprinted out of there to my car. I didn't see anybody exit the house, but I drove away, and then contacted the owner of the house again, telling him what had happened. Then I contacted Airbnb customer support. For the rest of the trip, I stayed in a hotel. This story happened just last month. My wife and I were planning to take a little vacation just for the weekend. We found an Airbnb up in a really nice area with a lot of great land. The place was way up north, about four hours away. It was a house, sort of like a cabin, and was up on a hill with a really nice deck overlooking the massive amount of land nearby. The area was mostly woods, hills, and just land. We also really liked it because of how secluded it was from the rest of the houses. There weren't really any other buildings or houses in sight. In fact, most areas over there were just vacation homes or cabins. 
we drove up there early Friday morning and arrived to the property at about 10 a.m. When we got there, we had a great time just relaxing and enjoying the area. It didn't take long, though, before our trip took a turn for the worst. That night, as we were just sitting in the living room of the house watching a movie, all of a sudden we heard a knocking sound. I couldn't tell where it was coming from at first, but after pausing the movie and getting up, I could tell it was coming from one of the windows. I walked down a hallway to where the noise was coming from. As I got closer, I was able to locate the window, and then the knocking stopped. I reached the window where it was coming from, but I didn't see anything when I looked outside of it. However, I didn't have a good feeling about it, because the house was so secluded, and most parts of it were surrounded by trees and bushes. I knew anybody being around here at all would be suspicious. As I walked back to the living room, my wife asked me if I saw what was causing the knocking. Just as I was telling her about it, we then heard a loud pounding coming from the front door. It sounded as though somebody was trying to break the entire door down. I walked back over to the kitchen area to try and look out the window and see. But once again, when I got at an angle to actually see who was at the front door, the noises had stopped and whoever was there was now gone. After this, we didn't hear any more noises for a while. I thought maybe whoever it was had now left. But about 30 minutes later, we heard the sound outside, just barely, of a man yelling. I couldn't tell what he was saying. In fact, I'm not sure if he was saying anything at all. We knew somebody was trying to mess with us or get inside the house for some reason. We would hear noises or bangs against the house. But whenever we looked out the window, whoever was there somehow disappeared. This happened a couple of more times, and my wife and I were getting concerned. We didn't really feel comfortable going to bed with all this going on. It was getting late though, and I decided if we were in fact going to sleep there, I would go outside and take a look around. I went out the front door and took a walk all around the house, but saw nothing strange and didn't hear anything either. I hoped that meant whoever was there was now gone, and I went back inside. We decided we would go to bed, but if anything else happened at all, we would call the police immediately. Once we had both got to bed and turned out all the lights, almost right away, there was a sudden sound of glass breaking coming from the opposite end of the house. My wife grabbed her phone and started calling the police. I shut the door and locked it and then started packing up all of our stuff. There was no chance I was going to continue to stay here with all of this going on. We didn't really hear any noises though as we waited for the police to arrive. It took them a while to reach the house with it being way out there, probably like 20 minutes. Thankfully, nobody tried to enter the bedroom we were in during that time. When the police arrived, my wife and I left the room with our bags packed. The police showed us a window in the living room of the house which had been broken and there was some glass on the ground around it, but after searching the house, they didn't find anybody inside. I didn't feel safe though. After the police left, my wife and I did the same and we checked into a hotel. A couple of years ago, I traveled to a city for a prospective job. I had a potential job offer and was going to stay a total of two days to look at the area in case I were to move there. I didn't really spend a whole lot of time looking for where to stay. I kind of just went onto the Airbnb app, found a place that looked good, and then went for it. I do remember though that the owner seemed like a really nice guy. When I arrived, the place itself was decent. It was a little place right by the city. I got the keys and got inside to drop off my stuff. After that, I went out for a few hours and then returned that night. I went to bed that night pretty early. I've always been kind of an early bird and I'm used to it. However, I woke up in seemingly the middle of the night, which is unusual. When I woke up, I looked around confused after seeing it was still dark outside and clearly nighttime. I looked at the clock to see that it was 2.30 a.m. And I remember, just as I was looking at the clock, I heard the sound of the front door to the house being opened. The house had been completely silent, and hearing that was a scary moment. I knew nobody else was supposed to be in the house. I'm not really sure what I was thinking. Maybe it was because I had just woken up and wasn't thinking clearly, but I grabbed the blankets and covered myself with them like a little kid. I then heard footsteps starting to come closer to the bedroom that I was in. My heart started to race like crazy, and I was terrified. I sort of came to my senses and knew that hiding under the covers was a bad idea, but what could I do? I had no time to prepare for this. As the footsteps got closer, it was clear to me that they would likely come in the bedroom. The only thing I thought to do was pretend to still be asleep. Maybe, just maybe, if somebody was going to rob the house or something like that, if they saw that I was fast asleep, they would just ignore me. 
I also felt this was my only option, because I had no time to run to the closet and hide, or grab something to use as a weapon. I didn't even have time to dial 911, as my phone was charging on the desk, not within my reach. Once whoever was there reached the door, I heard it open, and I closed my eyes and pretended to be sound asleep. I heard whoever was there take two steps inside the room or so, and then they just stopped. I didn't hear any more noises or movement for about a whole minute. Very carefully, I opened my eyes just a crack. I was careful to make it look like they were still closed, but I wanted to see whoever was in there. As soon as my eyes cracked open, I saw somebody standing right in front of the doorway, facing me. I looked at them for a couple of seconds, then I recognized them. It was the man who owned the Airbnb. I remembered him from his picture. He was just standing there staring at me, with no expression on his face. I was careful to close my eyes without making it look like they had ever been open. I was terrified and also very confused as to what he was doing here. He stayed there for probably five more minutes and didn't move. It felt like forever and I was just waiting for him to do something. Finally, I heard him turn around and then walk away. I laid in bed listening carefully to wherever the man moved throughout the house. He went straight for the door and then just left. After that, I stayed up for about two more hours before I could get back to sleep. Luckily, the guy never returned. The next day, I contacted the owner of the Airbnb and asked him what he was doing in the house during the night. He denied being there completely. I reported him after that and did not return back. That was the last time I used Airbnb. Okay, so this might sound like a bit of a weird one, because not like a spooky story. Our Airbnb wasn't haunted or anything, and I don't believe in stuff like that to begin with. But when me and my girlfriend stayed at an Airbnb in Belgium, something happened that creeped us out so much that we had no choice but to leave the apartment and check into a hotel. I've had a mate of mine tell me I overreacted over this, but just put yourself in my shoes. First proper morning of our little weekend getaway to Bruges. Me and the old ball and chain are getting ready to go out for breakfast when we realized that neither of us had packed any toothpaste. It was one of those I figured you'd do it kind of things. But it was no big drama since we could just brush our teeth and help ourselves to sketchy mints the owners had left for us. But I do remember my girlfriend looking around in the bathroom just in case the owner had left us any and saying some throwaway thing like, I wish they'd left us some toothpaste. Boring, I know. I'll get to the point. We go out for breakfast, have a wander around Bruges, grab some toothpaste, then head back to the Airbnb. That night, I go to take a shower before bed and saw that my girlfriend had picked up the weirdest toothpaste that I've ever come across in my entire life. Honest to God, it looked like something you'd get out of a second World War ration pack with this eye-watering old-fashioned menthol smell to it. I have my shower, walk back into the bedroom where my girlfriend is half asleep and I kind of poke fun at her for buying vintage toothpaste. She's knackered and half asleep like, what are you on about? Telling me to shut up and go to sleep, etc, etc. I had a wee giggle to myself, then got into bed and tried to get some sleep. It was the weirdest thing because how did she not realize she picked up such weird old toothpaste? And that's when it hit me. She didn't. She didn't realize because she didn't buy it, which means someone else bought it and then put it in our room, which meant that someone was listening to my girlfriend when she was in the bathroom, and it's not like the place was small and the bathroom was near the front door to the apartment or something. God forgive anyone who wake up my missus in the middle of the night, but I decided the circumstances warranted waking her up. She was annoyed at first, telling me to leave her alone, but once I explained the situation, she just sat up rigid in bed, like completely freaked out. We racked our brains as to how someone might have heard us, but couldn't come up with anything. Like I said, the place wasn't small and the walls were pretty thick, so how had someone heard us? The landlord lived miles away and as far as we knew, no one else had keys. It's something that bothers me to this day to be honest. They still can't work out how someone heard us, and I did ask the landlord about it who told me no one had been in the apartment. We were convinced it was him though, enough to just pack our stuff and leave. 
I know he hadn't exactly brandished a knife at us or anything. What happened would most likely make for a terrible horror movie, but like I said before, put yourself in my shoes. Someone is listening to you when you go to the toilet, and for all you know, they're watching you too. And God knows why they're doing it, but it can't be a good wholesome reason. A thousand nopes, seriously. Just thinking it over had me and my girlfriend getting out of there. It didn't ruin the trip too much, like we realized early what was going on, so I think we got off quite lightly. The extra hotel money was the real scary part, though. <laughs>